Hey guys, Adam Harrison from Bourbon Guitars here with the Cigar Box Guitar Builder. Uh, no podcast today, just a quick one. Um, it will be back next week. Uh, what am I doing today? Just want to show you a couple of things that we are. We, me, me. I need a haircut. This is gonna give a buzz cut today. Oh yes, just a little while. What's going on there? What's going on there? All right, a beautiful fretboard, lovely re piece of reclaimed timber. I can't get this, it's just light, crazy light. Great for work, but there you go. That's, that's just awesome, look at the, give it a nice sand, but it's like, I wanna keep some of that, some of that mess in there. It's just it's so cool, it's so cool. Oak neck. So just basically gonna do now, just got my little end file and just like to eyeball down the neck. Let's make sure there's no, it looks good, it looks neat, it's tidy. The only thing, and I've actually sanded, so what I do just here, once I've, once I've sanded and I, I whack this on the belt press, just whoosh, the belt sander back and forwards, back and forwards on the on the station. And then what I do, while it's on the station like that, I pivot. Look, it's like 3D. Right? Like that. What? I'm doing special effects prints. What's going on? All right. So, and I get a beveled edge that way, right? And that works real nice. Okay, so. But the one thing it won't do, and then what I'll do is, because it's still obviously as sharp as hell, it'll cut you to shreds, all right, along the fret wire. But what I then do, I've got 120 grit sandpaper, just an old bit of sandpaper that, you know, I've used over and over again. But what I then do is come back and forwards so on that beveled edge, I round over the, I just round over the edge. Now I've got files for this, man, right? I've got files for this, but it's literally, faster and it looks great but you still get these little sharp tangs on the very 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 corner because you're not um you basically got this really rectangular kind of let's see if i can get this here let's see if i can get that don't know if i can get that there like me don't know anyway so you get these really sharp tanks. So this is what this is for. All right, this is what this little file's for. You got a little domed edge there on the bottom. You got a little sharp square edge on the top. You can use either or, but what you do, get the old glasses off there. Just, just come around here. Just take those little sharp little tangs off. This, this is not the tangs. Just the sharp little edge from the base of the fret where it touches the fretboard. And that, this, this, this makes all the difference. Um, Darren and I have released, uh, have recorded a podcast about, um, uh, about doing this. I'm in the process of editing it because we basically spoke for two hours about this. And I don't wanna, I don't wanna, um, release a two hour podcast it's just it's it's just too much especially when it's mostly me talking you know what I'm saying it's like it's only so much that even I can handle with me all right so <laughs> so this is what I'm doing just taking down that those little edges there and um, then I will put this glue glue and screw this onto the heel that goes into the inside of the box and um, then I'm gonna give it a coat. I've been coating it, we've been using a lot of, um, uh, um, what's it called? What's the oil I've been using? Boiled linseed oil. I've been using boiled linseed oil quite a bit lately. I think it actually comes up well. Um, I do like using tongue oil as well. I don't like using polyester on the, on the wood because I don't like the feeling. I like the feeling of the timber. Like, I can hear that. It's kind of alive. And I'll just go over this with uh, a 240 grit just to take off any extra 
But it's just, you, I kind of, I think polyester over the top, you, it's, you're not touching the wood, you're then you're touching plastic to me. Anyway, that's a me thing. Argue with me in the comments, you're very welcome to. Um, so, as I go through, just making sure. And it doesn't take a lot to do this. Um, this tool that I've showed you, um, you don't have to buy this specifically. I'll just drop it on the floor. You don't have to buy this specifically. Um, I've got another little tool flapping around here somewhere, which is probably in here. Um, and all it is, and I use it all the time. In fact, I use it as much as I use this one. And it's one of the little, um, it's one of the little triangle files. Like, you know, that, those kind of triangle files. That's a big, thick one, right? That's a, I, I've got a little one. Um, which, since I moved the shop around, I did a bit of cleaning up in the shop. I can't find it at the moment. Um, and all you got to do with that is just run the... Um, where I put it? Oh. Run the edge of that along your... Um, sanding station and get rid of the get rid of the um the the file marks where it catches from the top until it's smooth all right so what that'll do is it'll glide on the wood so it won't dig into the timber on the neck but the sides will still be um still be serrated like this so you glide on the wood and you take off the corner of the you can take off the corner of the um, of the fret, uh, thereby making it undangerous. You de-dangerify your fret, and um, the reason this is super important, and this is what we're talking about on the on the podcast, um, or what we will be talking with you about on the podcast. Um, the reason that it's important is because of, uh, like if you look at my workshop, my workshop is, and probably very similar to many people's, we either work in a shed, um, or we work in, it could be a cellar, or it could be in a, like a, an attic, or you, like a spare area. Um, and if you're working outside the house, because my <laughs> office is open on basically every single side under underneath the house this kind of there's a wall there which has still got holes in it underneath the house i can see up onto the street from here um and then around the side of the house there backyard i can just see straight out to the backyard and there is a funny looking brick wall here which, which was half built by the previous owners um because they were going to build under here and whatever happened they didn't um and we never did um and um there's a lot of moisture in here so there's there's heaps and heaps of moisture in here so it's um it means that timber naturally is going to have a moisture content in it so when i take it upstairs after i've built it and it, it acclimatizes uh in a warm house the very first thing it's going to do is release moisture and if you imagine a sponge which pumps up like that with moisture when you put water in it and what happens to the sponge when the water leaves? It goes like this. And that's what the timber does. And fret wire, of course, doesn't do that because it's metal, it just stays rigid and stays the same size. So when you get a fretboard that shrinks a tiny, tiny bit, and we're talking a tiny bit, you can notice it because what happens along the side of the neck is the fret tanks pop out. And it's called fret sprout. And it happens on Everything. It'll happen on anything. It'll happen on a Fender Stratocaster. It'll happen to anything where you're not using a fret tang nip nipper to take off the a part of the, the, the tang. I don't like using those because what I find is when you use a fret tang nipper sometimes, if you've got a tiny bit of lift in a fret, um, the string can actually get caught underneath it when, you, when you're playing it, and then you end up, ding, and it's just annoying. So I hate that. So I, my fret tangs go right up to the end. Uh, but what I'll do to combat that once this guitar gets built, it goes upstairs for a week. Uh, and at the end of the week, I fill along, fill along the fretboard and there will always be a little bit of fret, fret sprout. So then I'll just come back down, run my file up and down the length of the fretboard, remove that little bit tiny, and we're talking a, probably a, an eighth of a millimeter. It's really, 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 really tiny. 
So that's that. Uh, so that's that side. I'll do the other side in a uh, second. Um, what's the other thing I've been building? Oh, okay. So I had a special order for a customer. I want to show you this. Check that out. Check this out. There you go. So this is a special order for a client. Um, it's a birthday present. And this is a mega, 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 mega old shovel handle. And um, on a beautiful Arturo Fuente box. Uh, CB Giddy machine heads. Um, electrics, strap buttons. Um, we've gone for a, um, a steamer, you know, the steamer thing that opens up and closes so as a string retainer, which works just perfectly. We've, I've used for the timber of the, the cutoff bits, which were rotten. I had to get it down to about 105 centimetres, like just short of 105 centimetres from the tip to tip, so otherwise you can't post it with Australia Post, they won't post anything bigger than that. So the box can't be longer than 105 centimetres, so I had to take off a bit, which is fine because the bit that it, bits that I took off were actually rotten, right? So what I used those bits for, for the bridge, and for the volume control. And here, I've got a really relict, rusted Victory pickup, which is made by Wade Costenbader um, uh, in the States. So it's American made uh, pickup. I love, uh, I love Wade's pickups. They are absolutely gorgeous. Um, they're not cheap. They're not cheap, uh, but they are, they are just spectacular. And they're handmade, and that's the thing. They're not they're not made in a factory. They, they're literally they're hand, he makes them by hand. He presses them by hand. The whole thing's handmade, and it is just gorgeous. And I just I'm so proud of how this guitar's actually come together for him. And um, I wanted to do something really special, so I, I really hope. Oh, the corners are from CB Giddy as well, and um, it's just come up an absolute treat. Slide guitar, obviously. So very. Kind of similar type of thing, you know, that, that we've seen kind of Shane Spiel, uh, Shane Spiel playing. Um, and... <laughs> so yeah I'm, I'm i'm really excited with how this has come out just needed a little bit more just need a little bit more attention um before i pack it off and send it away but how cool is that huh <laughs> i want to build a lot more of this type of thing so, oh yeah just on the side you got the rivets in the side for the so when you're playing it you can see the um and you see where you're playing, you see where your hand's going. So it's not on the top, it's slightly uh, off to the side. So it faces you and you can kind of see it. So it acts as side dots and top, dot, top dots. Top dots at the same time. So, all right, little quick video today about what's been going on in here. A little bit of a tip on, on how to fret. Um, do things that are different. I, my whole mindset is going from, from super flashy, super crafted guitars to doing things like you know doing things like 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 this you know and <laughs> so little ukuleles and 
just all made using some leftover timbers and things like that. This is this is cigar box guitar, man. One on one. It's just like this is this is where my head's kind of going here. So I don't know, man. How about you guys? Where's your head going with with builds? Are you looking at flashy builds and things. I mean, I'm doing a really flash one over here. It's really funky black one with chrome parts four string like the, the flashy headstock I'm, that's the next thing i'm working on this afternoon after lunch but um so this is a quick little video today just about what's been going on in here uh big thanks to ben baker and shane spill and the team at cbgiddy.com for sponsoring uh this channel and the um the youtube the uh the podcast uh if you want to support this channel you can by just simply telling your friends please tell them to come on uh check out the channel subscribe like um if you want to support the channel in a more financial way, um, you can do so by using our affiliate link. Uh, so just simply go down to the uh, information uh, in the in the uh, episode description and uh, click on the link. It'll take you straight to CB Giddy. Use the password Birdwood, uh, Birdwood, not Birdwood, Birdwood, and um, that'll uh, set you up for ten percent off uh, your first three orders with CB Giddy. Make it count. Uh, thank you to those people who've already done that. Uh, love you guys. Take it easy and uh, happy building.